Welcome to another video. The term monotone means increasing or decreasing. And the term increasing means non-decreasing, which means if it's a constant, it is counted as monotone. Okay, now these words may have confused you just by saying it, but this is what it means. If I write a sequence, one, two, three, four, as you can see, it's obvious that the numbers are increasing in size, so you call this a monotone sequence. If I flip it and I go five, four, three, two, and I go this way, this is also a monotone sequence. Now, this sequence is a monotone increasing sequence, or it is a monotonic. So whenever, whatever uh, the book says or the professor says, just go with it. So this is either monotone or monotonic sequence, and this is decreasing. Okay, now, the term decreasing or increasing could be confusing because if I write the sequence two, 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 and it goes on forever, this also is a monotone sequence. It is called a monotone non-decreasing sequence or monotone non-increasing sequence or a monotonic sequence. So whatever you want to say, just know that as long as it is not going up and down, it is referred to as monotonic. Now, if it is going up and down, you can't predict whether it's going to go up or go down, then you say it is not a monotonic sequence. We don't even know what the sequence is. Now, how do you show that a sequence is monotone? that is always increasing or always decreasing or constant, how do you show it? Well, what many students catch themselves doing is they look at the sequence and they say, I'm going to plug in the first number. So they plug in 1 and they get 1 plus 1 raised to power 1. So this gives them 2. So they get the very first one. Then they go ahead and plug in 2. If you plug in 2 here, it's going to be 1 plus 1 half raised to power 2. So that's 3 halves. No, that's 1, 3 over 2. Yeah, that's 3 halves. Come on. That's 3 halves squared. 3 halves squared is 9 fourths, which is going to be 2.25. So the next one is 2.25. This is greater than this. So they conclude that they have shown that the sequence is increasing. Is that true? Well, the sequence is increasing, but this is not how you show it. Because there are some sequences that would increase at the beginning, and after a while, they start decreasing forever. But because you plugged in the first 10 numbers does not mean the sequence is increasing. Now, a sequence that I like, the one I just described, that increases a little and then decreases, is called an ultimately decreasing sequence. And if the reverse happens, it's called an ultimately increasing sequence. So do not verify the monotonic nature of a sequence by plugging of the first few numbers into it and going, oh yeah. And that's the problem with derivatives. When you take the derivative of a sequence, after converting it into a function to test whether it's increasing or decreasing, you'll have to plug in numbers to check. And that might be a problem. Okay? Because sometimes it is true, sometimes it is not true. And even when the first few numbers you plug in are correct, how do you guarantee that it will always be correct? So what I want to show you here are the three ways you show that a function is increasing or decreasing monotone or monotonic. And I'm going to choose one of the methods because I would like to use Bernoulli's inequality. Let's get into the video. So these are the three ways you show them that I talked about. 
The first one is you take the difference between the one on the right and the one behind it. So the next term minus the previous term, you must get a number that is at least zero. You can't get a negative number. That shows this number is bigger than this number or this number and this number are the same for any number. So you pick any number at random, they have to have this description. Okay, now, or you can take the ratio. If a number is bigger than another number, if you put the bigger one on top of the smaller one, your answer has to be greater than one or the worst you can get is they're the same and it's going to be greater than or equal to one. That's another way to test it. And finally, and the juicier one, which is the one most calculus students do is as soon as they see a function, they just take the derivative of the function. They convert this into one plus one over x raised to power x. And then they do all the differentiation and all that. And then they say, okay, I can see that no matter what value I plug in, this will always be greater than zero for any value of x. Then I know the function is always increasing. That makes a lot of sense, right? Okay, but assuming this is banned in your classroom or in your course that you're taking, you have to do one of these. So for this video, this is what I want to do. This is a sub n and this is a sub n plus one. You see, in this case, I didn't specify what n is. So this is a better way to show it. Now I'm going to try to divide this by this and see if I'm going to get an answer that is greater than one. Once I get a number greater than or equal to one, I have shown that this is an increasing function. Pay attention to the algebra because this is where it becomes important. Okay. So here I have a sub n plus one over a sub n will be equal to one plus one over n raised to power n. From our laws of exponents, I know that I can split this in two, right? And I can also write this as a, a common fraction. So if I write this as a common fraction, I'm going to get n plus 1 plus 1. That's n plus 2 inside over n plus 1. n plus 2 inside over n plus 1. That's what the inside is going to be. But I'm going to raise this to power n plus 1. But instead of writing it that way, I'm going to write it as times n plus 2 over n plus 1. So I've written this this way. And on the bottom, I'm going to have n plus 1 over n raised to power n. So this is n plus 1 over n raised to power n. By the laws of exponents, I can put this and this together. Recall that a to the n over b, sorry, a to the n over b to the n is the same thing as a over b all to the n. So if I do the algebra and I divide this, I'm going to combine the powers. If I divide this by this, I'm going to end up with this n going up here and this one multiplying this one. If n multiplies this, I'm going to get n squared plus 2n. And if n plus 1 multiplies n plus 1, I'm going to end up with something that looks like n squared plus 2n plus 1. This raised to power n multiplied by n plus 2 over n plus 1. Uh, I just want to show that this thing I see here is greater than 1. It's not a proper fraction, okay? But you can't prove it yet. <laughs> because the way you see, look here, this, the bottom is bigger than this. But here, the top is bigger than this. But when you combine them, how do you know which one is bigger, ultimately? So, what can I do? Well, I know that I can rewrite this expression here. So see what I'm going to do. I'm going to write this to be equal to n squared plus 2n. I know it does not have 1. That's the only difference. So I'm going to add 1 to it. But I'm going to subtract the 1 immediately. So it hasn't changed the top. But now I have 2n, sorry, I have n squared 
plus 2n plus 1 in the bottom. This is raised to power n multiplied by n plus 2 over n plus 1. So you ask me, what is this that I have done? Well, I can split this into 2 so that n squared plus 2n plus 1 over n squared plus 2n plus 1 right there minus 1 over n squared plus 2n plus 1 raised to power n and then we're going to multiply by n plus 2 n plus 1 times n plus 2 over n plus 1 okay well let's keep going we're almost there this divides this, you get your 1. So this is 1 minus 1 over n squared plus 2n plus 1 raised to power n times n plus 2 over n plus 1. Now, does anyone see Bernoulli's inequality here? Clearly, this number is less than 1. So, remember, as long as what is here is less than negative 1 from Bernoulli's inequality, remember that 1 plus x to the n is, is greater than or equal to 1 plus n times x. As long as x is greater than or equal to negative 1. And n is an integer, we already know that. So this is what I'm doing now. I am going to say that what I have on the left-hand side is actually greater than or equal to 1. Because this is a minus, I'm going to retain it. 1 minus n over, I use this n to multiply what's in here. I'm going to have n squared plus 2n plus 1. No more raised to power n, and I'll be multiplying by n plus 2 over n plus 1. Actually, let's simplify what's in here so it's easier to multiply. You can see it. So this is going to be equal to, um, let's make this a single fraction. This is n squared plus 2n minus n. That's plus n plus 1 over n squared plus 2n plus 1. Oh, there's just a slight difference. So we're still back in that situation where the top is smaller than the bottom, but we don't know by how much, but this, the top is bigger than the bottom. So, but now we're going to multiply n plus 2 over n plus 1. If you multiply this by this and you foil it out, you're going to end up with n cubed. Let's see, this is n cubed. And then you're going to have plus 3n squared, plus 3n, but you're going to have plus 1. Oh, ultimately. What do you see here? Which is bigger? Everything is the same, same, except here. And if you're not sure that this is bigger than this, you can actually write this like the trick we did there. Write this as 1 plus 1, so that ultimately you're going to split this into 2, so your answer is going to be 1, the same trick we did here, here, okay, but we're going to be using a plus this time because there's a plus here, and then this is going to be 1 plus 1 over something that's always positive, which is n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n Ah, plus 1. So something positive will be added to 1. That means this sequence, where is it? a sub n plus 1 over a sub n is actually greater than 1 because it's even greater than this thing that we have here. And that's it. We have shown that this is an increasing sequence and this is what you do when you don't have calculus. I'm sure there are other ways people manipulate this to quickly arrive at what they do, but it's a nice skill to have. Since a sub n plus 1 
over a sub n is greater than 1, we say the sequence is monotonic increasing. Check mark. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.